We're here at Ndawi Yatemba in Ashburton, South Africa, and uh, we're here with our good friend, uh, Dr. Bob Graham. And uh, then we want you to meet the kids and the caretakers here. So we're going to introduce them all to you, starting right here. My name is Zimba. All right, and your name? Sienda. Sienda. My name is Sabello. Sabello. My name is Sia. All right. My name is Yamkela. My name is Dando. Sibiri. Brenda. Brenda. Aziz way. Blessing. All right. All right, and over here, girls, give us your name. What's your name? Juanello. Juanello. All right, very good. Amashi. Bali. Sam. All right, and some of you we, I've met before, some of you I have not. Let's get right here. What's your name? All right. Bianca. Okay. All right. Sorello. Let me say this. Sorello uh, is one of the first people we had here, and I've got pictures of me holding you when you were a little girl. Long time ago. A long time ago. Snow. Snow. You've got to remember snow, too. Yes. All right. And then we have some of our caretakers here in the back. Let's introduce them. Tell us your name. My name is Auntie Zandi. And what is this? Not here, All right, and all right, very good. Uh, we're missing one, but she'll probably be here. Well, tomorrow. we're excited to be able to introduce all of you. <laughs> All right, to all my friends and family at Stillwaters Church, welcome to Ndalia Timba, Children's Village in South Africa. It's located near a town called Peter Meritzburg. So if you look on a map, you'd find Durban. Peter Meritzburg is a city uh, close to Durban, South Africa. And our children's village is kind of in between the two. And as you can see, 
we're not your typical orphanage. What you're looking at right now are foster homes that we built with the help of our supporting churches and businesses in the United States. And these are three bedroom homes and each one of these homes has a foster mother and has six abandoned and orphaned children. So we're gonna go take a look and we're gonna go into one of the homes. We'll see what, what's going on. It's a Saturday morning, it's a little bit cold. Uh, I know it's uh, in, probably at, near Atlanta, Georgia, it's probably 90 to 100 degrees, but here it's probably about mid 40s. And so we're gonna say hello to some of the uh, families as we go through. I think these. I think this family is ready for us to come in because I told them we were gonna. Uh, it's a typical Saturday morning. Everybody's doing laundry and uh, uh, trying to do their Saturday chores. Uh, so hopefully we'll, everybody will be ready for us. So let's knock on this door. This is one of our foster homes, come in. and we'll come inside. So come. On. Like I said, each one of these homes is three bedrooms. Uh, it's got its own uh, bathroom. The only thing the homes do not have in it is a laundry room. And we have a, a huge laundry room for the entire children's village out back. This is one of our foster moms. This is Auntie Tendi. Tendi, say hello to Stillwater's Church. Hello, hello everybody. Okay, hello. and Auntie Pendy, Auntie Pendy, how long have you been living here? Uh, six years. So she's been a foster mom at Endowia Timba for about six years. This is a C's way. A C's way. Say hello to everybody in Atlanta, Georgia. Hi, everyone. And tell them how long you've been living here. This is my 15th year. 15, so he was a little tight when he got. I remember when we took him from the hospital. He was he was he was there at the hospital when we picked him up and he was probably maybe about that big. And now he's starting to get a, a lot bigger. Why t tell the people at the church what do you what do you like living about uh, uh, what do you like living uh, what is it about living at a Dahlia Timba that you like the most? Uh, I think everyone that like lives here with us. It's all his family, you know, that's a good one. I, I don't think I would have ever said that, you know, like the greatest thing about living in my family, my siblings, but he likes everybody that lives here. I thought he was going to say his dad, because that would be me, you know, and we teach our kids, you don't have to be a bi biological mother and father to be a parent. And so uh, he's been here for 15 years. He likes to go hiking with me. We, we bird together. I like to uh, do bird photography. Seasway also likes to do bird photography. So like father, like son. So uh, this is a Seasway, 15 years. We got some Peeway over here. We'll say hello to some Peeway. This is some Peeway. Some Peeway, how long have you been here? It's like 10 years. Speak up. It's like 10 years. 10 years. Man, he was also a little tight. How old are you now? 13. He's 13, so he moved here when he was three years old. And what are you doing this morning? Doing some, washing some dishes. Who's doing the iron? I see somebody's got the iron out. Who's been doing some iron? Are you doing iron? Let's look out back real quick. There might be some people doing some laundry. Yeah, if you can see, like I said, it's Saturday. Sorry about the sun. You can see everybody's got their laundry out. Nice. All right, so this is a tip of house. Let's go look at one of the rooms. Oh, oh, we got some more here. Hold on, stop, stop, stop. Tell these people it's still water. This is Sonky. So you tell, tell them how long you've been living at Endowia Timber. This is my team. 10 years, 10 years at Endowia Timber. Other than your father, me, what is it that you like about this place? Ah, see, the second one. Second one, it's family. This is in Bali. In Bali. Now, Bali hasn't been living here as long as these other uh, other kids have been living here. But how long have you been living here? This is my eighth year. She's eight years. And she's a senior. We call them, she's a matric student. So she's getting ready to graduate. And uh, well, I'm going to ask you a different question. Uh, since you're getting ready to matric and graduate from high school, what is it you want to do in life? Well, I was thinking of studying psychology. Psychology. Hey, isn't that great? Wouldn't you like to have somebody that grew up here in this Christian environment with a foster mom, with, with, with uh, uh, all the, like, Stillwater's being a supporting uh, uh, church, to raise this young lady to become a psychologist? That would be awesome. So anyway, this is in Bali, and we've got some other people coming in from ne next door neighbor. This is Florello. Florello, come say hello to the people. I don't think she thought she was going to be on the video this morning, but this is Suarello. Now, now listen to this question. Suarello, how long have you been living here? This is my 16th year. 16 years. So she came here when she was little, and she's a junior. 
uh, based, you know, if you looked at, uh, uh, we say grade 11, but she's a junior, she'll be matricking next year. And I'll ask you the question I've been asking all of them. She's a next door neighbor. So what is it you like living about living in Denali Assembly? That I have shelter. Ah. That I have people who love me. There you go. She has shelter, people who love her. That's what it's all about. Again, you do not have to have biological mothers and fathers to, to, to basically have a successful life. And so she's doing well in school. Are you planning to go to university? That's what I'm talking about. So anyway, this is Swarella. She's been here a long time. Auntie Pendy, give all of our cool for that is visit. Give, give all of Hey, hey, it's cool to see happy. They're happy. Uh, Bye, when dreams are very happy that we were able to visit this morning. So let's go and move around. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then we'll make a quick uh, run up here. We won't go into each other houses because of time, but I want to show you some of the other things on the property. So we'll kind of take a little pause. We'll move real quick, we'll fast forward, and we'll go up to the top of the property, okay? All right, now we're on the kind of the, the north uh, east corner, if you will, of the property, and I was just gonna show you a little bit about how Endalia Timba operates. Uh, obviously, years ago, about 20 years ago, this was a bird sanctuary. And so what you're looking at, <laughs> there were about thousands and thousands of South African birds, and they would sell them to the public. And what we did is we came and bought the property and it, it, was, all, it, it was run down a bit. Uh, that's why it was for sale. But I'm sure in the, uh, like in the 1970s, this place was booming. People would visit from all over the region to come to this bird sanctuary and see these exotic birds. But I, I imagine probably about the early 90s, it started fading a bit and, uh, and it kind of was overrun. But 20 years ago, I looked at it, it's about 10 acres. And I said, you know what? This property is gonna be perfect. For our children's village and so after a couple of years of you know just with bulldozers and TLBs and backhoes we were able to renovate the, the way the property looks and as you can see uh, up at the top we have our tennis courts uh, basketball to the left we have we, we call it a picnic lapa uh, but it seats about 60 people so we can come up here and have a nice picnic we also have youth camps here uh, there's about three or four churches every year that use our property for youth camps because we can sleep about 60 people. That building right there? And, that's, and there's these buildings right here. They have a lot of bunk beds in them and the bathrooms and showers to the right. And this, this area right here to the right is kind of a little, we, we kept a little bit of the bird sanctuary. There, there are obviously bird feeders and things up at the top. And so uh, we get a, a number of birds that come in here and, uh, and kind of during the course of the day and they... Uh, they either roost or they uh, kind of forage. Uh, and so it's, it's nice to have a little bit of that uh, next to the property. Now the house that you see up top, at the very top, where you see the satellite dish, that's a four bedroom house, uh, two baths. It's a place of safety. And what I mean by that is not everybody that comes here to endow you Timba is a long-term foster child. Sometimes social development, child welfare, they have uh, a child that's been abused are uh, neglected and they need to uh, put the child somewhere temporarily so they can do the uh, investigation to find out what the complete story is, but they need to remove them immediately from their uh, environment and uh, their situation. And they uh, call us and ask if we can put them in our place of safety for uh, a few days until they can sort out exactly what the situation is. How long has that been, um, that building been a part of you guys' program? Well, this house, it was always on the property, but we renovated it about 10 years ago. Uh, because again, we were always getting phone calls uh, from uh, a, 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 like a social uh, worker that said, you know, listen, I got a child, this child's been raped or this child's been physically abused. We don't know the complete situation, but we need to have a place temporarily for the child. And our original project is not to take in uh, children temporarily. It's long-term foster care. But we thought, you know, if that's a need, maybe we can take one of our houses and renovate it. We have a South African couple that's they're volunteers. And so they serve as that, pur that purpose to be able to help us take in uh, kids temporarily. And they usually end up with two or three at a time there, but sometimes they're there for a week, sometimes they're a month, and then sometimes they have nobody there. So 
Currently, there's no child up there right now, which is a good thing if you think about it. But we could get a phone call any minute and say, hey, listen, we need we have a child we need to do something with right now. So that's, that happened. So that's been about 10 years. And the LAPA has also been there about 10 years. Uh, so yeah, uh, so about 10 acres. Uh, the kids have a great time here, especially if, if you remember during COVID, we had a lockdown. Yeah. Our kids didn't even know what lockdown was because they still enjoyed living. It was like fun fair park here, if you will. <laughs> but anyway, this is part of our property. Okay. okay. Now we got 800 for the little one. We got 1,200 for the older one. Now, maybe, maybe it's time for the aunties to get. So we need some mangans, these people. We'll, we'll go bong. Bong, what, 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 do you think, what do you think this church did? The Stillwater's church from Atlanta, Georgia. They decided, because they know about side your good Hey, Ulu Kulisa, Lava Batwana Bani, Ganzima got cool. They know about size. They're like foster moms. They know it's difficult. So, so what? You, you give me a guess. Bon. Come on now. Okay. Well, how y'all want to say? 2,000 red. Pretty good, right? So we've gone from 800, we've gone. To 1,200 to 2,000. Gorkwa is not even close. 2,000 is not even close. They decided, these aunties, maybe they deserve, like, Ukisamuzi go July. So they think it's Christmas in July. They got you a gift card for five thousand. Oh, shopping on in that time and you can't shop. <laughs> so you can go get you some lunch, have you some coffee, and then go get you shopping on. Now what I do, I, I don't know if you need to spend it all tomorrow, but, but what I want you to do is buy something because the church wants us to know. They want to be blessed too. They want to know that you got something tomorrow. So if you say, man, I, 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 I'm buy, buy something and if you want to save a little bit for later on, that, that's okay. But they want you to get your shopping on tomorrow. They want the teenagers to get the shopping on tomorrow. And we'll make a plan. Now, we can we can do this. Now, I'm going to talk. It's just that we've got about four of the younger kids. And you know, you, without mentioning their names, you know who they are. If we talk to Tam, and you ask Tam that, because we got a gift for him, too. But maybe, because I'm always asking Tam if he can help me. Okay, well maybe you guys talk to Tim. So Tim, do us a thing. And you take these, these kids like you did last week and let them go shopping and help them with the shop. And we, we've taken care of Tim too. And uh, maybe he'll do that because that'll, that'll free you up all the time. He can't do it. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying not to have you babysit while you're shopping. Yes, come here. Uh, gather up here. We want to. I mean, we're. Uh, huh? You can just get footage of like them walking but okay.
You're famous now. Well, we are very glad to be here. We love each of you. We've uh, been a part of this project since its beginning and our people we want you to know that we are very happy that we're able to be a part of what is going on here in Ashburton and uh, we just want you to know that from Stillwater's Church we love each and every one of you so God bless you all right bless everybody uh... all right y'all have a good evening and we'll see you guys in the morning okay I'm so glad that you joined us today and uh, we're seeing all this footage from South Africa. This part of the video is actually coming not live from South Africa, but here. And the reason we recorded this here was just for technical issues, making sure that we didn't have too big of a file to try to upload. So I'm sure you understand. But uh, what, a, what an exciting time this is for us to be a part of the Children's Village there in South Africa to see all that uh, our giving, our sacrifices have been able to, to do there and what Bob and Joanna Graham have been able to accomplish with the Children's Village there in South Africa. Very, very exciting. Well, in the light of what we've been doing over the past several weeks, taking up this offering for Serve Your World, I want to read a passage or refer to a passage of scripture in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 25, Jesus said, For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. Um, I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. And it goes on and says that the sheep said to him, Lord, when did we do this? And he said, as much as you did it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. And so this whole idea of serving God, of helping uh, live the Christian life, it is more than just church attendance. It is more than just being a moral person. Uh, it is about serving the underserved, helping the needy helping the helpless. And so I want to just give you uh, some principles from that because Jesus said, he said uh, to, the, to the sheep, he said, um, you've done this to me. And then he said to the goats, you didn't give me food. You didn't give me drink. You didn't visit me when I was sick. You didn't visit me in, in prison. And they said, well, Lord, when did we not do that to you? And he says, as much as you did not do this to the least of these You've not done it to me. I want to just give you a couple thoughts and won't be very long here, but I want you to just think about this as we have uh, done our best to serve these AIDS orphans in South Africa. Just a couple thoughts. Jesus defines true Christianity by not what you're uh, against, but what you're for. A lot of Christians think that Christianity is defined by well, I take a stand against this, or I don't do this, or I don't go there. Jesus said that's not the way you define Christianity. It's not what you're against. It's what you're for. You're for the homeless. You're for the poor. You're for helping those that are less fortunate. And so we need to understand that Christianity is not just about going to church. It is about living a life of sacrifice, living a life that is pleasing to God by helping others. And then Jesus said that when we minister to the poor, uh, the marginalized and the needy, we are actually ministering to him. Now, I want you to think about that the next time you get upset, maybe with somebody that's bothering you. Well, that's convicting to think about it, isn't it? I mean, sometimes I just get so upset and I people sometimes can bother me because they're 
messing up my schedule or messing up my agenda. But Jesus said this, when you help those in need, when you help the poor, the marginalized, you're ministering to him. And this is very important that we understand that God wants us to live our lives this way in a way that we minister to him. And then Jesus calls us to inspect our actions. I want you to think about that. He said there was this group, they were goats. In other words, they were not believers. They were not followers of Christ. And he said, depart from me. And they said, but Lord, um, you know, when did we not serve you? When did we not visit you in prison or give you water when you're thirsty or food when you're hungry or clothing when you're naked? And Jesus said, as much as you didn't do it to the least of these, you didn't do it to me. Now, I think the challenge there is for us to inspect our own lives, to inspect our own works. Um, what are we doing? Are we living really the way that a Christian should live? Because once again, Christianity is more than, you know, saying, well, I'm against abortion or I'm against this or that. Christianity is more than just going to church or saying that I listen to Christian music or I even read my Bible. Well, Jesus told us in this, uh, in this story that we are to inspect our fruit. We're to inspect our works. We're to inspect how we live. And the question then becomes, am I really living the marks of a true Christian? Am I exhibiting this? Am I showing this? And once again, uh, I want you to know that I appreciate those of you that have participated in serving your world, helping these AIDS orphans, half the world away. Uh, most of us, most of you have never met these kids, met these um, caretakers, and yet you served, you, you, you gave. And I think that is the mark of true Christianity. And then I think another thing that we can take from this is that feelings of empathy are not nearly as important as the actions of love. You see, the goats, what they said was, Lord, when did we not do this? Weren't we living for you? Weren't we being Christians? And I'm sure they felt empathy. They felt like, well, we care for these people that are marginalized. But Jesus, I think, clearly in this story shows that it's more important to show actions of love than it is feelings of empathy. Because it's easy to have feelings of empathy. We see somebody in need and we feel sorry. We feel like, oh, I feel bad for that person. But what we need to understand is that our actions are most important. So what do we do? We inspect our life. We inspect our works. We inspect our actions. We realize that true Christianity is more than what I'm against, but it's what I do. What am I for? What am I living for? Not what am I living against? And then one of the underlying principles here is that the trappings of religiosity, if I can use that word, the trappings of religion are not what saves you. I think you can uh, learn from this passage that uh, there are people that think they're Christians because they've got the trappings of religion. Maybe they go to church. Maybe they are moral. Maybe they do all these things. But Jesus was very clear that is not what gets a person to heaven. That is not what saves a person. So it's not just the trappings of religion that are important here, but it's the actions of love. And then Jesus has called us to love our neighbor. I think this is important to understand. Jesus defined our neighbor in the parable of the Good Samaritan. You remember that story, right? Uh, the Good Samaritan. Samaritans were enemies of the Jews. They, in every way, these were people that, it would be like in our culture, if Jesus gave a story of an Islamic terrorist that was the the hero of the story. We would be like, whoa, that's crazy. But Jesus, I think, shows us that our neighbor is the person in need. Our neighbor is not the person that can give back to us or that can repay us. But our neighbor, they may look different than we are. They may smell different than we do. They may 
sound different or listen to things differently than we do. But Jesus is clear that when we are truly living for God, when we are truly living for Jesus, what do we do? Well, we, we love our neighbor. And in fact, if you'll recall, Jesus said the two greatest commandments in all the Bible. In fact, he said all scripture hangs on these two things. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And when we do that, we are truly living the Christian life the way God wants us to. And then, of course, we see from this passage that Jesus rewards our service. And I believe that he rewards those that give and that serve and that help their neighbor. And that's what we are wanting to do as a church. And that's what I pray that you do as a believer. Well, thank you so much for being here on this weekend. I hope you've enjoyed um, seeing these kids, seeing the Children's Village, uh, getting to meet some of them, getting to see some of the stuff that your offerings and your sacrifices, what it bought for them. And um, I hope you'll listen to this challenge. Jesus said, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was naked and you clothed me. And we say, Lord, when do we do that? He says, as much as you do it to the least of these, you've done it to me. And so I'm very excited and thankful that we have as a church served the least of these. God bless you. Let me pray and we'll be finished. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful story that you gave us that shows us what Christianity really is about how that it's more than just the trappings of religion. It's more than just religious ritual, but it's actually serving those that are in need. It's actually helping those that need help. And God, help us to live that way as believers and help us to live that way as a church. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you. I love you. I'll see you this next Sunday.